Hi everybody and welcome to our Friday TNT. Two days to go to the election and we will have that alcohol ban on Saturday night from 6pm. It'll go through till Sunday at 6pm, so just be aware of that this weekend. Ties heading to the polls on Sunday. We'll get to a couple of election stories. Well, I suppose this is an election story, and it's headlined in the Bangkok Post. Zero chance of a coup, and Narong Pan, who's the army chief, says the army has learnt its lesson. The army chief said yesterday... And this is the fourth time he's gone on record to say much the same thing. I'm not really sure how many more times he needs to make his point clear. He's providing assurances that no coups will take place while he's in charge, saying the word coup should not exist in anyone's vocabulary. Well, of course, the question is how long will he be in charge? General Narongpan, who will retire on September the 30th, spoke to the media in the lead-up to Sunday's election amid concern the country may experience unrest after the polls. Well, there will be some sort of unrest uh, after the polls close on Sunday evening. They'll count the ballots and they'll probably have some sort of indicative result of who won various seats by 10 or 11 p.m., Then there's just going to be weeks of horse trading and discussions between different parties to see who can cobble together some sort of coalition and try and form a government. That, I think, is going to be quite a long process, no matter who wins the primary votes. But the army chief has said, well, I don't worry. We've learnt many lessons from the past. We've reached a point where democracy has to go ahead. Everyone should be mindful and avoid what should not be done. He goes on, the term should not be used. It's not appropriate. I want reporters to remove it from your dictionary. Quizzed on whether the military should also remove the word from its vocabulary, General Nong Rampan said, of course, it's removed. A lot of people do assume that there's just going to be another army coup and that's just the way things happen in Thailand. But at some stage there will be some sort of transition from these phases that have happened over the past 50 years or so. He went on to say, I cannot say whether the country will be peaceful. I mean that peace can only be achieved by everyone working together. But I can assure you that what occurred, coups in the past, the chance is zero now. So that's the fourth time he's gone on record during the past 12 months that there won't be another coup. But as he mentioned, he is retiring in September this year. And General Narongpan said he'd encouraged army personnel to exercise their democratic rights to vote on Sunday. And then the general went on to address the policy of the Move Forward Party to get rid of military conscription. The army chief also downplayed a move by some political parties to replace conscription with voluntary recruitment if they form a government after the election. The general said they have the right to carry out their policy if they become the government, but the military also has the right to explain why conscription is necessary. Everyone has the right to agree or disagree with conscription. We can have different opinions. That's normal. So the army chief speaking out there uh, three days before the election. Let's check some other quick political news. And Thai PBS World reporting that the Move Forward Party leaders' political future uncertain. With only three days until the general election, the Move Forward Party leader Peter Limjorunrat, one of the favourites to be the next Prime Minister, is suddenly facing an uncertain political future following allegations he owns undeclared shares in a media company in violation of the Constitution. And a political activist says Peter is not qualified to run in this Sunday's general election, should be removed from the race. Apparently, Peter holds 42,000 shares in ITV, a media firm. And then a bit further down, it says ITV was Thailand's first independent broadcaster. Set up in the aftermath of the May 1992 uprising, it ceased operation in 2007, But the activist claims that ITV is still an active media company doing radio broadcasts and operating an advertising business via its website. The company reportedly earned 21 million baht in revenue last year. And the next paragraph reports that Peter has been a shareholder, number 6121. And Peter also said he submitted information about his ownership of the shares to the NACC back in 2019. That would have been the for the last election that he owns the shares in his capacity as the executor of his father's will. 
And then it says his 2019 asset declaration, however, contains no mention of the shares. Peter admitted on Thursday that while he's already submitted the share details to the NACC, he's unsure whether they were in the first or subsequent submissions. He said, I already submitted details about the shares. I saw it with my own eyes. This is the sort of stuff that happened in the last election where the incumbents tried to dig up a bit of dirt about the up-and-coming rising stars, particularly when they were doing well in the polls. So what has the Election Commission said about this? The Election Commission Secretary-General says he's not yet seen the complaints, but since the complaint is about the qualification of a candidate, it can be dealt with before or after the election. According to the election law, the Election Commission can seek a ruling from the Supreme Court if it finds before the election that a candidate is not qualified. The Commission can also conduct an investigation into the complaint after the election or before the election results are officially announced. Now, this Election Commission has been used as a bit of a tool, along with the Constitutional Court, to support the incumbents if they disbar this particular very popular candidate before the election or even after, it's going to cause quite a stir. You're watching TNT. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Five Star Marine, for their ongoing support. I also thank you for your ongoing support. I think we've just kicked over 21,000 subscribers and I don't take that lightly. I'm very, very grateful for your ongoing support. And uh, let's keep it going. This is TNT. Friday's TNT, last of our weekday news programs. Tomorrow we've got our daily, uh, our weekly. <coughs> Friday's TNT, the last of our weekday programs. We've got our weekly live program tomorrow. I'll be joined by Nick. We'll find out what he's been up to. We might, together with you, also try and predict what might happen on Sunday and in the weeks and months beyond. Pretty much a fool's game, I would have thought. Anyway, we'll do our best. Uh, Also on Sunday, we've got our latest edition of Grumpy Old Men, a program that uh, some of you seem to be enjoying, and me and Steve, and I think number three uh, in the coming weeks, we've been enjoying doing the program as well. Now, this uh, next story, I hate doing these, but it is a cautionary tale, and it's reported by patiamail.com. And a Liverpool tourist is the latest motorbike tragedy in Thailand. This is almost a a weekly... Bugs everywhere. Uh, This is almost a weekly occurrence where people end up in a Thai hospital calling for some sort of funds because they weren't insured. This story says that family relatives have arrived in Thailand to be with Liam Kilby, 25-year-old Merseysider, who crashed into a clothes shop window in Phuket, On May the 1st, his loss of blood was so great that he technically died en route to the hospital but was revived by paramedics at the scene. According to the GoFundMe website, almost 11,000 British pounds have been raised out of the 13,000 being sought. Liam's sister Molly said on her Facebook page that a British embassy caseworker will check with the hospital to ensure the bills were fair, the first time such diplomatic assistance has been publicly noted in the 10 similar cases of cashless Brits in serious Thai traffic accidents over the past year. Family has admitted that Liam did not have medical insurance. It pains me to keep on reporting these completely preventable stories, but I do so really as just some sort of cautionary tale. If you're coming to Thailand, you should get minimum travel insurance you should probably get or just check on your health insurance if you've never ridden a motorbike or if you don't have a motorbike license or if you're not properly qualified to ride a motorbike in thailand don't rent a motorbike i mean these stories are just so clear as to the trouble that you can get into and it's not only going to cause trouble for you but also for your family and friends The article goes on, although compulsory insurance for foreign tourists has many advocates, there are problems as Thai motorbikes are usually more highly powered and may not be covered in the travel insurance. So yeah, you can rent a Ducati or a Harley Davidson here in Thailand. Uh, Most of the time people just rent those 110cc or 140cc step throughs, but uh, they can get on at a bit of a clip. Uh, No worries about that. 
Moreover, there are many reasons, apart from drugs and alcohol, why insurers refuse cover, including failure to wear a crash helmet or the catch call failing to take due care. And then the patiamail.com finishes by saying the better solution is to avoid riding a motorbike altogether, either as a driver or a pillion passenger. So it looks like a lot of fun just careering around Thailand on, the, on a motorbike. You've sort of never done it before and it looks like a lot of fun, and it is. But if you don't take the proper precautions, if you don't have a proper valid license, if you don't have health insurance, just don't do it. We move on to our next story now, and a British man arrested after attacking a tuk-tuk taxi driver in Phuket. And it looks like the tuk-tuk driver's got his finger out pointing at the man, and a British man was arrested after he punched a tuk-tuk driver after he and his friends crashed into the parked taxi driver in Patong. So this reported by the PhuketExpress.com. Let's go to the video and see what happened. And uh, there's the tuk-tuk. Now, just note the front there, there's a motorbike. There's a gentleman about to get off. He's wearing a black shirt. He walks back and he says, uh, I'm not happy about the situation. Bang. And, well, there's another one, by the way. But now I'm going to run away, get on my bike and flee the scene. A couple of ties come in to try and stop him. They don't do very well. And uh, that man gets away. But the tuk-tuk driver, a Mr. Armin, filed a report to the Patong police. He told police that a motorbike rider crashed into his parked tuk-tuk. The rider was with a small group of other young foreign riders, none of them wearing helmets and appearing aggressive, according to Armin and CCTV footage. And there was a verbal altercation taking place between a group of the foreign motorbike riders and the tuk-tuk driver who wanted compensation for the damage to his vehicle. But while verbally debating the incident and cost of damage, one foreign rider wearing a black shirt can clearly be seen on the video getting off his motorbike and proceeding to punch Armin in the side of his head several times, blindsiding Armin. And the suspect and his friends then fled on the motorbike as several witnesses attempted to stop them from fleeing. And the motorbike driver was identified as Mr. Hoban Jack Mark Paul, a British national from Manchester. And police found Mr. Paul in front of the hotel and he initially tried to run away from law enforcement but was finally caught. Police explained to Mr. Paul why he was being arrested and Mr. Paul agreed to go to the Patong police station. Not sure if he would have had much choice. And there's the policeman just explaining to him, now you do know you just can't randomly hit people. The tuk-tuk rider Armin confirmed to police that Mr. Paul was the motorbike rider that punched him. The Patong police are continuing their investigation for further legal action. And Mr. Paul remains in custody as of press time with multiple charges, including resisting arrest and assault. As to exactly why that gentleman got off his motorbike and decided to go and hit the tuk-tuk driver, we don't really understand at this stage. So going to our next story now, and this reported by the National News Bureau of Thailand, the TAT, that's the Tourism Authority of Thailand, kick-starts a campaign to promote lesser-known destinations. Yes, you might be surprised, but there's more to Thailand than Bangkok, Pattaya, Phuket and Chiang Mai. And uh, the Tourism Authority of Thailand's launched its new campaign called Amazing Secondary Cities, Must Visit, Must Love, to promote lesser-known destinations in the country. The campaign emphasises the concept of exploring secondary cities and towns which offer a new and interesting dimension for tourists by stressing diverse travel experiences that are distinct from one another. And these experiences include natural beauty, cultural heritage and fascinating attractions, some 55 destinations. Now, just coming back from Bangkok uh, in the last couple of weeks, driving back to Phuket, we went to some of those places that I'd never been to before and just a, a little bit off the beaten track, but not that much. And there's some beautiful little areas of Thailand that are definitely worth visiting. And I'd urge people when they come to Thailand, just get out of the tourist ghettos and have a look at the rest of this country because there's so much to see. The TAT Governor Utasak said the campaign will help distribute income from tourism activities that normally circulate in major cities and resorts to the secondary 55 secondary destinations nationwide. Additionally, the TAT is collaborating with travel media to offer itineraries that encourage Thai tourists in major cities to explore secondary cities throughout 2023. And we should remember that the highest number of tourists in Thailand 
are ties. So a good idea to encourage them to get out of their safety zones as well to go and visit some of these new secondary destinations. Moving on to our next story now from ASEAN Now. Thai man arrested for selling fake thousand baht banknotes. How much did he sell them for? Let's find out. And officers from the Economic Crime Suppression Division have arrested a Thai man after discovering he sold fake thousand baht banknotes online with a promotion, buy 10, get one free. The Bank of Thailand received a complaint about counterfeit banknotes being sold on Twitter and found the Twitter user was identified as a 25-year-old Thai man called Krit Sada. He was arrested at his house in Singburi. And Krit Sada sold the fake 1,000 baht banknotes at 100 baht each and offered his customers a promotion of buying 10 bills to get one free. And the customers could either pay on delivery or transfer the money to Krit Sada's account. He delivered the fake bills to his customers using a private delivery company. So not really the sharpest tool in the box, but uh, there you go. You can buy 1,000 baht banknotes for just 100 baht. Buy one, get one free. Hopefully you're a bit more up to date with what's happening in Thailand. And uh, we do have that election coming up in two days. So no doubt there will be a lot of extra news coming out in the next 24 hours as we lead up to poll day on Sunday. Thanks for joining in. Please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow morning, 9am live.